and gentlemen, we are jumping up into the next panel session, talking on opportunities for Bitcoin in development of arts and entertainment in Africa. Please welcome on stage the moderator for this panel session, Ms. Ojoma Ojai. <laughs> okay, cool. We're going to be, we'll be quick, first of all. Um, but hopefully th this panel is interesting enough and it, enough of a change of pace that we can keep you from your lunch without too much um, of a backlash. So we're going to be talking about arts and entertainment. And to talk about this really important topic with me, I've got three wonderful panelists. And I'm going to invite them on without further ado. First of all is the wonderful Jab Chumba. Please give her a round of applause. <laughs> Um, next on the list, we've got James, a.k.a. Momo. Give him a round of applause, please. Last but certainly not least, we've got Michael Ugu, who's also on the panel with us. A round of applause for Michael, please. Um, I feel like the previous panel did, gave a quite interesting segue for us because one of the panelists was talking about Jamestown. How many people here know Jamestown, have been to Jamestown? Nice, okay. Um, with lots of artist communities. The reason why um, we included this panel is very linked to what Femi was saying in the morning as well, which I firmly believe is Bitcoin adoption in Africa will come from utility more than education. That's not to say education is bad, but education for the sake of education, if people cannot see what impact it has on their daily lives, I think we will struggle. And when we're thinking about utility, art, culture, music, dance, books, literature, film, are such an important part of our lives and our culture. And that's the sector in which I work. And we're seeing the application of different types of technologies in this sector. And I feel like that's a sector where if we can find strong utility for Bitcoin, we'll have multiple layers of impact. It will have impact in terms of the business models in that sector, which has a massive impact on the economy. But also it will have massive impact on the way that Bitcoin is perceived. The example that was given in the, in the panel before was, imagine if artists are talking about being Bitcoiners. I remember doing a study in Nigeria, I think it was in 2019 or so, 2020, and the study was looking at young people in Nigeria and what influences young people in Nigeria and the categories of people that influence them the most. Can anybody guess what is the, who influences Nigerian young people the most? Artists, exactly, artists. It was really shocking. I thought it would be religious leaders, but it was not, it was artists. <laughs> um, so imagine if we have a generation of Nigerian African artists that are Bitcoiners and are using Bitcoin in their businesses and their lives, it would make so much of a difference, I think, in terms of adoption. So that's why we're here. So I'm going to allow um, this wonderful panel to introduce themselves very quickly. We'll take it from you, Jeb Chumba. One minute introduction, who you are, how you got here. I don't mean the airline, but like. <laughs> <laughs> the, music, the music coming up was so epic. I already feel so important. Now I'm told that artists are the most important people in this conference, so. Um, my, name, my name is Jeb Chumba. I'm from Kenya, and I started um, uh, something called African Digital Art almost now 15 years ago when I was told that there was no electricity in Africa, so why would there be digital art? It sounds like it was ancient times, but it wasn't really. It was pretty contemporary. And so a lot of the work that I did was basically, um, as a digital artist myself, was to introduce uh, and also um, help foster a community of digital artists who were interested in the intersection between creativity and technology. So um, I think as technology was being, uh, as new technologies have been adopted within the continent, we are always trying to figure out like how can we make this a solution-based thing. 
whereas most of my work goes completely to the other side, which is the creative sector. Like, how can we use our imaginations? How can we create new possibilities? How can we can create new worlds and new ways of thinking? And especially on, um, for a continent that is on a cusp of a huge revolution, um, with majority of people from this continent who are, who are younger than me, I felt it was a sense of um, personal duty to take up this African digital art um, realm and understand it in order for generations to come um, to, to ask me like, oh, what were you doing when the big digital revolution happened, when Bitcoin changed the continent? What, were you, what activities were you part of? Because it was such a critical time. So um, I think that um, digital art uh, as a result of Bitcoin, as a result of all of these new fintech um, technologies taking place, has sort of put digital art into the center stage. And that's why I'm here. And, and that's why I'm here to discuss this and the new opportunity. Thanks so much, Abchumba. Momo? Good afternoon. Um, my name is Momo. I am from Nairobi as well. I am a content creator and upcoming Bitcoin influencer. Uh, my main job is helping people understand and appreciate the great products that developers are building and how to be able to use them. I think the gift that I've been given is I find something that is extremely hard to understand and I make it easy for people to understand because I hold those conversations about Bitcoin with my eight-year-old and that's really peculiar for me because I want it to be as accessible as possible. I'm really excited to be here and also to help drive the conversation on how arts and entertainment can be able to make use of Bitcoin, especially in this continent. Great Thank to be here. you. Thanks very Thank much, Mimo. Michael? Yes, hi guys. My name is Michael Lugu, based in Lagos, Nigeria primarily. Um, so yeah, I've been in the music industry for about the last 10 to 15 years or so. Um, ran one of the first VC-backed streaming platforms out of Lagos. Um, set up Sony Music Entertainment West Africa in about 2013, 14. Signed the likes of WizKid, um, David O, Techno to Sony Music, Columbia Records, RCA Records. And today I have um, probably one of the largest um, content creation spaces in Lekki and Lagos called the Free Me Space. Um, I've been in Bitcoin since about 2016, and funny enough, it was based on the fact, you know, I was trying to facilitate a transaction, um, had some issues with um, uh, some funds getting frozen, um, transacting with a US bank, and someone advised me, hey, you know, check this thing called Bitcoin out. And, you know, so when I first got, you know, Orange Pill, it was because of the utility um, using Bitcoin to transact across the African continent and across the world. Thank you. Thanks very much. I think let's jump straight into it. You've already talked about, uh, Michael, an opportunity around transacting. Yep. I'd like us to really dig deeper into the opportunities that we see for Bitcoin in arts and entertainment in, in Africa. Um, Jeff Chimba, do you want to start on that question? The opportunities have been quite incredible since 2017 when people were starting to ask what digital art is because a lot of folks didn't really understand or recognize where digital arts belonged in culture and in creativity. Um, and then also there's just, there's always been, being in, within the art sector and the tech sector, there's always this missing gap we talk about when we come to Africa. We, we talk about, um, how comes you know our, our African artists are so talented, so incredible, and so diverse, but they don't have like communities of support or financial support? M majority of our institutions, our art institutions, are funded and supported by other government, other foreign governments, and th there's been a long. It's been about like decades, even since before I was born of artists, organizers, and community um, folks trying to bring together curators and also collectors um, and find a way for them to interact and engage. And Bitcoin has been this way of anonymizing this community that needs to get together. People are trying to mingle them together. Um, and it's also been a way of 
of artists also finding financial support and, and also um, an economic way of taking their, their, their work seriously. So I can't speak enough about the importance of this space and I think it's quite revolutionary. And one of the reasons why we're feeling all of these ups and downs is because most of us need to claim this space and also participate in and de define what it is and what it means. Like um, since 2017, I have met so many digital artists for the first time who've had the ability to actually make a living, who have the ability to actually earn thousands of dollars, money that they would have never had come across if it wasn't for the space. So I think digital art um, has had like a very unique opportunity of saying like this is a direct case of how this can benefit a community, how this is an, uh, um, an investment actually on, on, on this, this important culture that is going to continue to take more and more importance. Like arts and culture, is, is central to the technology space, and it's, it's, it's important for all of these spaces to emerge, yeah. Thank you, thanks very much. Mumo, what opportunity do you see? Um, for myself, I'll, I think I'll, I'll pick first Weiblik. Uh, we have a Tanzanian Bitcoiner by the name Man Like Quacks, who's actually used Weiblik to be able to build an income around his music. And that's something that artists can be able to use. We have apps like uh, Thunder Games where I know Mary is one of the big proponents where gamers can go and even enthusiasts can go and earn sats while playing games. And these are things that if you can be able to use this hobby to make you money because so many artists start with I love music or I love film and it's that love that takes you there what actually keeps you there is the opportunity to create an income out of it. I know there are places like Giza Fund where if you have a project that you have, you can be able to go there, tell people about the project, and people can fund you. And these are opportunities for us to be able to tell our African stories. If you're a musician, you can be able to ask your fans to fund your next album, and what better way to use Bitcoin because if you decide to use the normal ways, there are bottlenecks that exist. One of the biggest that I see, of course, is censorship. So if I'm an artist and I want to be critical of the government, then the government can follow my bank account and essentially muzzle my voice. But if I can be able to tell my people, you know what, I have Bitcoin, this is my address, this is what I'm talking about, and you, you you want to support me, then come over on this side. I think one of the biggest things that we can be able to do as a community is let's educate the influential people who are in the art space, who are in the in entertainment space, so that once these people know this thing, they can be at the forefront. They don't have to be the biggest educators, but we can use them as influencers to be able to grow the entertainment space. Yeah. Right. I think what you're, you're saying about Bitcoin, we know Bitcoin is freedom money, obviously. Yes. But I think you're now introducing a layer of freedom as it relates to artistic freedom. Yes. And artists being able to explore topics that are hot exactly. in Africa. I remember yeah. seeing a tweet yesterday, and somebody was saying something about how heartless their government is. Um, obviously an African person, and then somebody else tweets back to say, look, when you're saying these things, you need to be specific, yes. because there are many of us in this boat, so yes. which one? Yes. <laughs> so absolutely, that's yeah. a good point. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Michael, you. What, what opportunities do you see in, in music, but also more broadly for art and Bitcoin? So, I mean, like in, in, in art, yeah, I think there, there, I mean, there are just so many opportunities with regards to, you know, both sides of the coin. I think that you know, if we're talking about culture in general, um, you know, from a Bitcoin perspective, you know, our, our job is trying to onboard, you know, as many people as possible to understand that, you know, Bitcoin is that, you know, currency for humanity. And if we're trying to do that, you know, what better way than to use, you know, artists, cultural ambassadors in order to spread that kind of like message. We see the biggest brands in the world, the biggest brands on the continent use influential artists, use influ influential musicians in order to sell 
you know, their next brand, you know, a new toothpaste or a new washing powder. Mm. You know, but what's more important? Is it toothpaste, is it washing powder, is it, is it money? Is it, mm. is it this savings technology, mm. right? And I think, um, I think from, from the other perspective, from the artist's perspective as well, I think with, the, you know, with, with Bitcoin, using Bitcoin as that you know, foundational technology to spread your art, you now don't have limitations geographically, mm. right? You can literally open up your, your works to a global market potentially. Um, you know, I know that obviously this is this is kind of like glossing at the surface, and there are m other issues underneath it. But I think there are massive opportunities, you know, from both sides of the coin. Absolutely, and, and those issues. Maybe we can start from you um, this time, Michael. Those issues that stand in the way of being able to do that. Can you talk about some of them? I mean, you know, the, the debates are obviously ongoing. Um, you know, I think that you know one of the key things that you know is part of the debate, you know, about using Bitcoin for art is obviously the fees and the issue around fees. Um, which is, you know, very well, you know, it's fairly well understood. And I think that's, you know, throwing it out to the devs in the building to be like, if you understand, you know, the opportunities here, you know, to grow Bitcoin adoption, then, you know, there are ways that I'm sure that we can, you know, resolve some of these issues around fees, maybe even having some kind of like, you know, priority um, fee basis for people who want to in inscribe on, on Bitcoin, right? I think that's something to potentially look at. Um, you know, so the, 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 there are there are many issues from te technological perspective, a fees perspective, and what have you. But I think that you know, rightly so, the the opportunities to me, you know, outweigh those potential issues. Um, and as we see, you know, I guess technologies like ordinals grow. You know, we are seeing, we are getting to discover. You know, what are the issues? How can they be resolved? And the debates, I think, are all healthy. I think that whether or not we see them see, see you know art on Bitcoin as good or bad, I think the debates are healthy. And I think that ultimately, you know, the ultimate goal should always be adoption. Um, so yeah, that that that's my personal take anyway. Thank you. I feel like we said the dreaded word. Oh, how many people here are in favor of ordinals versus not? In favor of ordinals? Wave. On my own. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. What ifs? Um, <laughs> Mumo, what, um, what do you think the barriers are? One of, one of the biggest challenges is the current incentive structure in the entertainment space. You'll have the creative at the forefront, but when the money comes in, it goes to the suits mm. who finance the whole thing. So I think that's one of the biggest things that we need to address, even as we try and find solutions in the entertainment space because there is no point of someone earning 1% and yet it is their creativity, it is their mind that we actually used for the 99% to be divided amongst everyone else. And that's one bone of contention that is there because if, if I have fronted the money then I need to eat. But if we can be able to build it and especially have the artists, have the people who are in the entertainment space be at the forefront of building what they want to see. Mm. So that now, if I have this idea, I can be able to say, okay, I, I need a CTO who will be the developer with me on this project, but it's my project, first of all. But on top of that, to also include collaboration because there are so many projects that are happening around, and of course, we want decentralization, that there's also power in building something that will work in South Africa, in West Africa, in East Africa, so that it helps each one of us. And if we can be able to build that, then all this will trickle down to every single artist that is in every single place, and that way we'll be able to grow that community. Thank you. Yeah. Jeb Chumba, how do you think we can accelerate? In, um, in arts and entertainment, how can we accelerate the... I definitely, I definitely believe that we have a lack of imagination. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that we end up, when we are in the forefront of something, we end up reproducing what already exists. Mm -hmm. And already within the arc and tech space, it's already pretty toxic. Like, if you think about it, like, our, the culture that, that, like, that creates these innovation spaces and like mm. makes us live in, in teeny tiny silos where we're working so incredibly hard, but we're only working, this, these six people only in the whole universe are working on it. They don't, there's not much outreach into how we interact and engage with outside communities. So one of the things that I found working with artists was that it, it just it was like also such a huge block for them to really understand why Bitcoin is important. So a lot of the work that initially we were doing rather than creating like 
opportunities for people to actually earn money is that we ended up spending most of the time educating people exactly how to why why Bitcoin is important why how can it benefit that's and it, it, it felt like it was um, almost two years of having the same conversations where um, and, and very few people were reluctant to, to, to jump into the waters um, so I think that a part of that is also trust. It's also trying to understand like long term, not just short term, of getting in and out. A lot of artists are not interested in just dipping in and dipping out. They're actually thinking of how do I create my ecosystem? How do I create my livelihood from this? How, do, how can someone buy my artwork, buy, invest in me over a long period of time? How can I watch my artwork accrue in value? How can I pass on a legacy? Like if I write a song or if I make an artwork, how, how can my grandchildren and great-grandchildren benefit this from, from this space? So, so I think that one of the problems that we have is our lack of imagination and putting ourselves into boxes and also defining ourselves in a way and then getting trapped um, a year later or two years later by something else changing. Mm. So one thing I can say is that um, this is a space that will take some time in investing and also, and part of that time comes with trust, building trust and seeing the value of having um, anonymous, um, sustainable economies that support creators. And that is something that is not only unique to Africa, where we don't have that kind of support, but it's actually a global problem because many artists are, are, are panicking about this new AI revolution and how it affects their work, their, their, their intellectual property, their value, and, and on also their contribution to like humanity over time. So there are very many things, but I think that, that with, opportuni with, with challenges come opportunities yeah. and also um, an, a, an ability to break things. And I think we should be in the process of breaking, breaking, breaking breaking down how we think, breaking down how we see ourselves. And I really, really appreciate the, note, um, the keynote that was given earlier this morning, which was also just resetting our mind frame and thinking about who we are as Africans. We, our generation and the people in this room might have a barrier, but the younger generation mm. do not see themselves like the way we have been brought up. Mm. The world is changing extremely rapidly and, and we have an opportunity to really participate. Absolutely, thank you. We've got maybe 10 minutes to go to wrap up this panel, and I was wondering, does anybody in the audience have any comments or questions? I do still have comments or questions. If we can get a mic to them. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Precious Elisha, Focus Pilot, known as the Web Trade Community. Um, I'll be directing my question to you, please. Um, to Michael? Yeah, Michael, please. Okay. Yeah, so you're an artist, and um, I was just wondering why are artists, especially in Africa, so silent about um, blockchain, Bitcoin as a whole? Because it will really um, create a lot of um, adoption and a lot of movement if um, the followers of artists, just imagine, like, almost the whole world knows Whiskey, um, um, knows Rema, knows Davido, for instance. Um, Black Sharif, I could go on and on. What if these people actually, I, I do know like some of them are making money off blockchain. Take for instance Don Jazzy, he's a producer, he makes money. But why do you think these people are silent over um, the blockchain and how it could help um, the adoption increase? And yeah, that's my question to you, thank you. Thank you for that. Let's see, oh, okay. Feel free to clap, you can clap. We won't ask you to give us sats for clapping. <laughs> yes, go on. Well, first of all, good afternoon. Good this afternoon. is a question for you, Mr. Michael. How can we get people to understand the basics of what Bitcoin is and how can it be beneficial? And how can it be? Beneficial. Beneficial, beneficial, okay, got it, thank you. We can take maybe one last question, if there's still any, and then we can... We have two hands up. Who do we go for? Oh, -ho. okay. <laughs> so we can take maybe two. Two, okay. Last two. All right, thank you. Uh, my name is James Kutuda, and I'm community manager for IPBTC. Uh, mine is more of a comment, and, uh, you know, this is like one of the largest stages in Africa, 
where Africans can express themselves or African Bitcoiners can express themselves. Yeah, um, for um, um, artists and um, content creators and all of that, getting into Bitcoin and um, pushing the Bitcoin agenda, I feel that we, can, we shouldn't just leave that to individuals like um, Bitcoin uh, corporations or Bitcoin um, focused companies can um, take the initiative and, you know, do more in that aspect. You know, um, it's still part of education, it's still part of um, um, the Bitcoin adoption agenda. So we shouldn't just leave this to, uh, let's just leave the um, artists to come on board, you know. You could sign up an artist, you could put him uh, as the face of your brand. Uh, that's one of the ways you can also arrange build the artist. Um, like what IPBTC did, uh, we supported um, an event called the Colors of Cross River in Nigeria. Uh, um, that, that event goes across a whole state. And imagine taking a um, Bitcoin idea to non-Bitcoiners at the state level, you know? And that is a very, that event alone caught across for one week in um, a, a tourism event. So yeah, that's the, just some of the ways that uh, we can actually influence and get artists on board. Thank you. So he was just giving a comment. Is your comment a question? <laughs> okay. And a comment as well. All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Oyeni Asante, and Secretary to the World Technology Forum, Ghana. Please, mine is a question and a comment as well. My first comment is, I uh, mean, our course to bring the showbiz or entertainment into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, we've got to look at the regulatory issues. Because the reason why in Ghana, we may not have people like Black Sheriff, Sarkodie, Shatawale, Stoneboy and Co, signing on Bitcoin platforms or promoting is an issue of regulation because our government or the Central Bank of Ghana do not recognize Bitcoin as part of a monetary transaction in the state. So if these artists as brands want to come on board, it's going to be a problem for them. So we can look at that as well. Then private sector, how we can promote Bitcoin for financial liberation. Because in Ghana, our major issue is unemployment where my, my fellow Ghanaians here can confirm that this year, our finance minister announced in Parliament of Ghana that government is not employing, and that's an alarming issue for, for us as well. I'm sure it is not only in Ghana, in other, other African countries when it comes to employment. These are the conversations we can have around Bitcoin for the students in university communities as well to see how important it is for us to promote. My question is, all these things that we have enumerated, how can we get the emerging youth in university communities, in, in tertiary training centers and all that, to understand the need for Bitcoin and how it can liberate us economically? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks very much for the question and the comments. Um, oh, you had two questions. Have you got the questions or do you want me to repeat them? Yeah. I no, like remember them. the first and the second, I think, kind of. So, I mean, you're so you're talking about, you know, artists, producers, influential people, you know, why aren't they talking more about Bitcoin um, and opportunities, you know, in the space? I guess, you know, it's, it's, it, it's still so early, right? I think, you know, the, the fear is that, you know, they, they, they maybe educate wrongly. Um, I think that, you know, they also have, you know, the, you know, Don Jazz is a very busy person as it is. But I think that, you know, for me personally, I think it's more about, you know, educating them, in terms of, fine, how do we onboard people in the most, in the safest way possible, right? I, I don't think it's great to get them um, uh, bogged down in the whole conversation around, you know, art and, um, you know, on, on different chains and what have you, but I think that, you know, largely speaking, like in, in various articles, we can see that a lot of, you know, use cases, you know, aren't, aren't really worth it. I think that the use cases, you know, quite small. Um, it's like in the music industry, right? You have a lot of artists that, you know, release music and distribute music, the vast majority of it isn't very good, right? But you know, you do have your David O's and your Wiz Kids and your Rema, and then you have the ones who are coming up tomorrow. Um, so I think that, you know, f for me personally, it is about, you know, fine, how, how do people like me and you talk to them? How do we actually, you know, help, you know, get them to have that conversation with their fans and their followers? I think it's also on us to figure out, okay, how do we create better UX? 
better experiences? How do we make it fun, right? When you listen to music, when you watch a movie, you know, it's quite fun. I think a lot of the conversation around Bitcoin is obviously, you know, it's cash based, it's monetary, it's talking about, you know, de devaluation of currencies, you know, inflation, you know, b um, b bad government and what have you. Not necessarily fun to everybody, right? So I think, you know, it, it's literally about educating the guys, we're talking about David O, Wizkid, Don Jazzy, how can we make it fun? And, you know, working with other devs to create better experiences. Um, for me personally, and I think you know when it comes to you know how, how do we make it more beneficial? I think it, it's it's similar. Something you know, even though I know, I guess there's not a lot of fans of ordinals in the building. I think ordinals are still a very new, um, you, you know, technology. It was literally I think January 2023. Um, I think today we've had about 45 million um, ordinals inscribed on the on the Bitcoin blockchain, and it's like. Fine, it's a year, not even a year old, right? So in, in time, I think it will be beneficial. I think, you know, as you heard from other people on the panel, how important art and culture is to humanity in general. We understand how important money is. Art and culture is also massively important. I think I, I alluded earlier to the benefits on both sides you know, of this conversation that there, there, there are benefits to Bitcoin in terms of onboarding and there are benefits to the art community, the music community and what have you, the, the wider creative community with regards to, you know, how they can break geographical barriers, how they work. I think a thing that we also forget is that once you inscribe, you know, work on, on Bitcoin, it's inscribed forever. Right? It isn't really like you know, other chains where you have like a pointer pointing to a file somewhere else. Right? We're talking about um, having your art ins inscribed on the blockchain, you know, being, you know, it's, it's an ir irreversible transaction, ir ir immutable and what have you. Um, so I think there's lots of ways, that you, lots of things that we can obviously come up with. But I think, yeah, continue to educate, talking to influential people to help us onboard and orange build more people um, is a way that I think we'll get a, wide, a, a much wider benefit and a better understanding. I'm all for talking and educating, but you know, I'm, I'm kind of like nobody, right? And I do think that we do need you know, important, influential people you know, supporting us in having this conversation. Because as the, the panel title rightly says, it, it is you know, currency for humanity. It's not for me, it's not for you, it's for the entire human race, right? So um, uh, yeah, we can do a much better job. And um, I think I'm working on it. You guys should continue working on it as well. Thank you so much, Michael. Um, uh, rounding up, um, Mumo, did, did you want to, there was a point that was raised about regulatory issues, um, and then any of the other questions, did you want to touch on that? And then we'll come to you, Jeff Trimba, and these will be your sort of final comments. Not like in life, like for yeah. this panel. <laughs> um, um, the interesting thing is, the conversation around Bitcoin never ends, first of all. Mm. And someone raised the, question and who is supposed and how can we get to people? This is my word to you. You are the one who's supposed mm. to go and do it and do it messy and make mistakes and correct those mistakes and build from there because uh, he talked about getting influential people on this. You are the influential person that we are looking for. Everyone has to do something in this space so that we can get hyper-Bitcoinization. And then for artists, someone asked about artists, why they don't speak about it. First, uh, an artist will not mess with their bag, first of all. We have to be in that reality. The company that is sponsoring them, how they make their money, is completely on the opposite side of where Bitcoin mm -hmm. is. And so the discussion here is for us to be able to help them see the value that we have on this side so that they can sacrifice what they have on the other side because the truth is, we will not wait for the laws to be favorable to Bitcoin for us to start building things in Bitcoin. You better build, if, if the government comes in, deal with that when that comes in. Otherwise, we will always be on a chicken and egg situation in the Bitcoin space and never ever do anything. You know the problem, you, you know where the, the shoe hurts, so take care of it in your community. When you do that, you help us just move a little closer. When it comes to uh, the government regulations that every single government is trying to figure out what to do with Bitcoin, that's not a problem. You continue building whatever you are building. Because when it starts affecting people in normal life, uh, honestly, it will affect them and not Bitcoin. Because essentially, we are aware that Bitcoin is censorship resistant. So whatever they do in terms of laws, of course, I'd love to be in those conversations where a government official is sitting down and trying to bring in regulation so that I tell them this is what you need to actually say. 
And those are conversations that we can hold with time. And I think one of the most important things I'd love to leave with everyone is, I would love for you to be the thought leader. If you can look at yourself and the information that you have about Bitcoin, that's enough to tell someone else because they know less than you do. And then you keep on learning and influencing more people. Thank yeah. you. Jeff <laughs> Chumba? Um, one, one of the things that I've been able to witness is just how powerful this space is. Like, I'll just give you an antidote, an, an antidote, not an antidote, an anecdote. <laughs> Um, uh, there was a woman who I knew was a digital artist who had, was in a very, very abusive marriage. And while um, the world was shutting down, she found economic freedom through digital art. She started selling her pieces uh, anonymously um, and was able to like, um, have in possession to, uh, like some financial wealth that she wouldn't be able to in, in the society. And like those are the, the powerful stories that um, surround all this, um, this whole entire universe that we don't talk about. I think one of the biggest barriers we have is our language. And we, um, I just wish we had like a, a linguist <laughs> also help uh, for us to, d to define different terms so that um, the language that we use to explain Bitcoin could be more accessible to people outside of the box. So I, for me, I'm not really, really like discouraged by the space. I'm not really, um, I'm not really uh, uh, getting down on us too much because it's actually quite insane, the things that we're trying to do. It's actually quite a new way of thinking about what we think is valuable and how do we create value. Um, and I think that art is always in the forefront of that. I'm really excited to see new artists who are going to find like financial opportunities and also create a new generation of artists who will t finally bridge that gap between art, tech, and finance that has been missing all along. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Michael, Mumo, Jabchumba. My key takeaway um, from this panel is that Bitcoin um, can be beneficial to art and entertainment, but reciprocally, art and entertainment can be beneficial to Bitcoin. And so we have to find more opportunities to bring those two ecosystems together and collaborate. Thank you all very much for listening and see you around.